Hi guys, this is uh, Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video is going to detail how to undertake a single sample t-test and in particular a two-tailed version of the single sample t-test. Uh, another video after this particular video will deal with a uh, the one-tailed uh, alternative to this particular test but for this particular video we'll do a two-tailed test okay uh, so we have a particular scenario uh, this scenario has been taken from a classic text it's the Bernstein and Levine uh, business statistics text uh, it's chapter 9 and this is exercise 9.55 from that particular test and what we're going to do is we're going to walk through the single sample uh, t-test uh, I suppose uh, process for this particular scenario Okay, so what we have in an article, uh, it was claimed that the typical supermarket trip takes a mean of 22 minutes. Okay, uh, and that suppose that in an effort to test this claim, you select a sample of 50 shoppers at a local supermarket and you find that the mean shopping time for the sample of 50 shoppers is 25.36 minutes with an associated standard deviation of 7.24 minutes. And the question is, uh, using the 0 0.10 level of significance, is there evidence that the mean shopping time at the local supermarket is different from the claimed value of 22 minutes? Okay, so for every hypothesis test that we perform, there's five stages. Uh, stage one is where we define our hypothesis, uh, and the hypothesis is a statement about the population parameter. Okay, so in this case, we're talking about average trip times to the supermarket. So the hypothesis is going to be a statement about the population mean or the average population time. Okay. Now, when it comes to a hypothesis, there's two, I suppose, positions that we can take. There's the null position H0, and there's the alternative position HA. Okay? It's important to note that the alternative is always what we're trying to prove. Or the alternative is the position that our evidence suggests. Okay, uh, in this particular question, we're being asked: Is there evidence that the mean shopping time at the local supermarket is different from the claimed value of 22 minutes? So the alternative is what we want to try to prove, or is where we'd like our evidence to take us to, and that's that the mean shopping time is different to 22 minutes. So that the mean shopping time is not equal to 22 minutes. In which case, the null hypothesis must be that the mean shopping time is equal to 22 minutes. Okay. And what we do from a hypothesis perspective is we assume the null position to be true, okay, until we capture evidence to suggest that this is not the case. Okay. So that's stage one done of our hypothesis test. Uh, we've defined our hypothesis. Okay. Don't forget that the alternative is always what you want to try to prove. In this case, we've been asked, is there evidence that the mean shopping time at the local supermarket is different from the claim value of 22 minutes? Okay. Uh, the second stage is where we define the significance of our test or the significance level of our test. So our significance value. Uh, and that's given in this particular in this particular scenario. It says using the 0 0.10 level of significance. So what we know is that alpha must be equal to 0 0.10. Okay? Uh, I suppose more importantly the significance is the probability of us incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis okay uh, so if we reject the null hypothesis what we're really saying if our significance is at alpha is equal to 0 0.10 what we're saying is that if we do reject the null hypothesis we'll only reject it uh, incorrectly 10% of the time Okay? Which means that if we do reject the null hypothesis, that we're 90% confident that we've made the right decision. But let's just keep in mind that we might be wrong, but we will only be wrong 10% of the time. Okay. Now, we also need to keep in mind that this is going to be a two-tailed test because the alternative position for us to prove that the, that the null position, that the mean shopping time is 22 minutes, for us to prove that incorrect, all we need to show is that the mean shopping time is less than 22 minutes or that the mean shopping time is greater than 22 minutes. So this is a two-tailed test. Okay. Uh, the next stage is our test statistic, three, okay, is our test statistic. Uh, 
where we uh, calculate how far our evidence is away uh, from our hypothesized uh, center of our distribution. Now we're going to do a t-test on this, a single sample t-test, so our test statistic is t is equal to x bar minus mu over s divided by the square root of n. Okay. So to calculate the test statistic, there's one, two, three, four values that we require. Okay. Uh, I suppose what we should do first of all is we should calculate what the sample distribution or the sample values are that's given in in this scenario. Okay. So we suppose it's suppose in an effort to test this claim, you select a sample of fifty shoppers. So what we know is that n is equal to fifty. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we notice that the mean shopping time for the sample of 50 shoppers is 25.36 min minutes. So the mean shopping time x bar is 25.36 minutes. Okay. With an associated standard deviation of 7.24 minutes. So our standard deviation s is equal to 7.24 minutes. Okay. So we have most of the values. We have the sample size n. We have the sample mean x bar. And we have the sample standard deviation uh, for this particular scenario, uh, S. Okay? So the question is, what is mu? Well, mu is the value of our null hypothesis. So mu in this case is going to be equal to 22. So our test statistic, T, is going to be equal to X bar, which is 25.36, minus mu, which is 22, divided by s, which is 7.24, which needs to be divided by the square root of n, which is which is 50. Okay. Now I'm going to do this on a calculator. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to calculate what the numerator is. It's 25.36 minus 22 gives us a value of 3.36. I'm going to divide that by 7.24, okay, uh, which gives us a value of 0.46. And when we when we divide by a fraction, it's equivalent to inverting and multiplying by by the inverted fraction. So I'm going to multiply this by the square root of 50. So I'm going to multiply this by the square root of 50 to give us a test statistic of approximately 3.28. Okay. So what we know is that in standard units, okay, the evidence is a distance of 3.28 standard standard units away from our hypothesized mean value. Now the question is, is this far enough away from 22 to be significantly different to it? Okay. So to figure this out, what we need to do is we need to calculate, I suppose, we need to calculate our critical values. Okay. Our critical values for our distribution. Okay. So we're assuming a t distribution. So our distribution is going to be bell shaped. Okay? Okay. It's centered on zero. It's a two tailed test. Okay? So we have two tails. And we take our significance level and we split our significance level in half. We put alpha over two in this tail and we put alpha over two in the left tail. Okay? Uh, well, alpha over two is the same as 0 0.05. Okay? So our critical values in this case are the critical values associated with 0 0.05 of an area okay, in the right-hand tail of our distribution or 0 0.05 of an area in the left-hand tail of our distribution. Okay. Now, we have a set of tables that we use that will allow us to calculate uh, what critical value has 0 0.05 of an area to the, to the right-hand side. Okay. And the tables tell us that Okay, if we go to our t distribution tables, if I just grab a set of our t distribution tables, okay, we have already created these particular tables for the t distribution. Okay, our t distribution tables look something like this. Okay, uh, and this is a table of the students' t distribution for critical values for right-hand tail areas. Okay. So what we're interested in is we're interested in that there should be 0 0.05 of an area in the right tail. So there should be 0 0.05 in the right tail. So this is this column here, which is 0 0.05. And then what we do is we look up our degrees of freedom for our test, which is our sample size minus 1. So we're going to come down this column to 49. Our sample size is 50 
minus 1 gives us 49. So the question is, what critical value uh, with 49 degrees of freedom okay, has 0 0.05 of the area to the right-hand side? Okay. Now on our tables here, 49 is here's degrees of freedom. And the column is P is equal to 0 0.05. If we triangulate in, gives us a test statistic of, uh, sorry, a critical value of 1.677. So it's 1.677. That's what we get when we look up our t distribution. So actually, this value here is equal to 1.677. And this value over here is equal to minus 1.677 to the symmetric properties of the distribution. Okay. So now we have our critical values. Okay. Uh, so what we're saying is this, is that if our test statistic... Okay, falls into any of these critical regions. Okay, we reject the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. Okay, and clearly what we can see is 3.28 is in the right hand tail area. Let me just maybe do that a little bit bigger. Okay, so our our distribution looks something like this. Okay, it's centered on zero. Our critical value here for our right hand tail that has 0 0.05 in it is 1.677. Okay. Our test statistic is 3.28. So 3.28, which is our T value, 3.28 falls in the rejection region of our distribution. Okay. So what we're going to say here is this is that. The probability of observing a test statistic as extreme as 1.677 okay, is at least or is at most 0 0.05. Okay? So what we know is that observing this particular test statistic is very, very improbable yeah, if the null hypothesis is actually true. Which makes it that it would be very probable to observe this test statistic if the null hypothesis was actually incorrect. So the next stage of our test is to make our decision. So step five is our decision. Okay, That's where we compare, let me just do this, we compare our T value to our critical value. Okay, And what we have here is clearly, clearly our T statistic is bigger than our critical value. What I mean by that is 3.25 is bigger than 1.677. And as such, as such, we reject, we reject H0 in favor of HA okay, at the 10% significance, significance level. Okay, at the 10% 10, 10 significance level. Okay. Or really what we're saying is this, is that there's evidence to suggest that the mean waiting time, so we're rejecting, okay, so there's evidence to suggest that the mean waiting time is not 22 minutes. And actually from our evidence, what we're suggesting is that the mean waiting time is significantly greater than 22 minutes and falls into a right tail. But the test was a two-tailed test. If we had found that the mean waiting time is less than 22 minutes and into the right tail, that would have also been evidence for us to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, uh, and I hope this video was helpful.